three. Okay, Hi, my name is Hugh, this is the SRIGC, and the topic of this little video presentation is how to measure THCA, tetrahydrocannabinolic acid, at the same time as delta-9 THC. This is something that previously was only possible to do using high-performance liquid chromatography, HPLC, but now, with the miracle of derivatization, we can do the same test on the gas chromatograph. Um, okay. So the first step in the process is to calibrate the GC. So what you'll need is a couple of calibration standards. You'll need a Restec cannabinoid calibration standard and a Restec standard for THCA, tetrahydrocannabinolic acid. Okay. So the chromatogram that results from injecting the, the three cannabinoid standard gives us a CBD peak a delta-9 THC peak, and a CBN peak. So you point to each peak in turn, so I point to the CBD peak, and hit calibrate, and then calibrate the um, CBD peak, calibrate the THC peak, and calibrate the CBN peak. Yeah. So it looks like the back flush is... So now I'm calibrated for CBD, THC, and CBD. So the next step is to get the THCA standard and inject that into the GC with no prior derivatization. So here I'm going to do that. And that results in a chromatogram that looks like this. So the THCA peak will decarboxylate in the heated injector of the, of the GC, and you will see a peak that comes out at the same time as the delta-9 THC standard. If the standard is really perfect, the amount of the delta-9 peak should be 87% of what the peak was when you injected the delta-9 peak from the original Restec standard. This is because in the process of decarboxylization, the THCA loses some of the weight of the molecule, 13% of the weight to be exact. So in a perfect world, the decarboxylated THCA standard should give you the, a peak that's the same size as the delta-9 THC peak times 0.87. So the next Straight little through, experiment can... is to take 50 microliters mm -hmm. of the original Restec three-way cannabinoid um... standard and put it into a smaller little bottle. Right? This is a 200 microliter little glass vial that you can buy for a few cents. At the same time, take 50 microliters of the THCA standard and put it into a second little glass bottle. Now what we're going to do is derivatize these two samples. So the derivatization process cannot work if there's any methanol left. The standards come in methanol, so we have to evaporate the methanol out of this bottle. So the easy way to do that is to use an aquarium pump like this. You can see I've hooked up a little needle to the end of the aquarium pump, and the aquarium pump is bubbling merrily out of the end of that needle. So to encourage the rapid evaporation of the methanol out of the bottle, we're going to take the needle and just stick it into the into the little glass vial to encourage the methanol to evaporate quickly. It would evaporate eventually if we just left it on the countertop, but it might take an hour or two. This way it only takes a few minutes. So once the methanol is evaporated, you'll see that there'll be a little white or brownish kind of a sludge in the bottom of the 200 microliter vial. So we're going to redissolve that sludge, which is the THCA or the three cannabinoids, and we're going to dissolve it in a derivatization reagent called MSTFA, which is a, a very long chemical name for N-methyl-N-TMS trifluoroacetamide, but we just abbreviate it as MSTFA. So you can buy this from Restec. So we're going to take 50 microliters of the MSTFA and put it into the bottle. So that's the same volume of liquid that we started with when it was methanol. So we took the methanol, 50 microliters, evaporated it so that it was dry, and now we're redissolving the sludge at the bottom 
into the MSTFA derivatizing reagent. This is going to change the molecule. It's going to replace the carboxylic acid group on the molecule with another group. And in the case of the already derivatized cannabinoids, it's going to make a similar modification to another oxygen that's hanging off the end of the molecule. So all the molecules will be derivatized, not just the THCA, but also all the cannabinoids. So the chromatogram that results when we inject the derivatized cannabinoid standard, which contains CBD, Delta 9, and CBN, we get the peaks shifted earlier in time than they were originally when they were underivatized. The red shows the underivatized peaks, the black shows the derivatized peaks, and you can see that they come out at an earlier retention time. So what we need to do is to calibrate the derivatized CBD, Delta 9, and CBM, and we do that the same way, by pointing to the peak, calibrating the derivatized peak, accepting new and close, and we do that for each of the three derivatized cannabinoid peaks. So now we inject the derivatized THCA peak. And notice now that instead of coming out at the time of decarboxylated delta-9, the THCA peak comes out well after the CBN peak. as a separate peak at the end of the chromatogram. This particular THCA standard has apparently decarboxylated somewhat in storage because along with the THCA peak, the derivatized TH THCA peak, we also see a smaller peak that comes out at the time for derivatized delta-9 THC. So the real amount of THCA detected by the system is the sum of the derivatized THCA peak plus the derivatized delta-9 peak. In a perfect world where the standard was perfectly fresh, there would only be this one THCA peak and no derivatized delta-9 THC. So here we have a typical cannabis sample extract that we've made by putting a tenth of a gram of cannabis flour into a bottle with 40 milliliters of denatured alcohol. We let it sit in our incubator for a few minutes and then inject into the GC. So injecting the underivatized cannabis extract, you can see that we get a very large delta-9 THC peak with a small amount of CBD, CBG, and CBN. Now when we do the same sample but derivatize it, you can see that now there's really almost no delta-9 THC, but instead we have a, a, a large THCA derivatized peak and a smaller delta-9 derivatized peak. So you can see the ratio of the THCA to the delta-9 that was present in the fresh cannabis flower extract.